focusing on inertia, the first law for each of these demonstrations, I want you to just write that down real quick. The inertial demonstration apparatus, or IDA for short. That's this thing. It's this hanger with some large nuts on it. Okay, and so you're gonna draw a picture of what I'm doing with it. Um, that's what these are called. It's not that funny. I'm gonna put it on my head and I'm gonna look ridiculous here. Okay. Now, it's probably no big surprise that if I were to actually take this and start spinning it, what's it probably going to do? Keep oh, spinning. Uh, Keep spinning. Off. Whoa. Well, if I spin it right, I spin it right. Find the flat spot on my head. There we go. So I spin it Whoa. and keep spinning for a while, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. But the opposite also happens. If I keep it still, it's going to stay still. And then I start moving. Whoa. It stays still. It generally stays still. Okay. So right now I'm actually showing you both sides of inertia. Both sides of the first law. An object in motion likes to stay in motion. But an object at rest likes to stay at rest. So as long as the friction is low between my head and the hanger, then when it's at rest, it likes to stay at rest. But when it's in motion, it likes to stay in motion. Friction is the ultimate enemy of the first law of motion. Okay, so when you're actually doing any kind of movement, whether it's throwing a ball, shooting a bullet, kicking anything, pushing anything, friction is what's going to make it eventually stop, right? So that is a key idea when we're dealing with any kind of inertia. Friction is what eventually stops inertia. Using this idea, I want you to draw a picture of what you saw. It doesn't have to be a great picture, but you've got me, you've got the weird hanger, makes me look like I got pigtails, okay? And describe what you had or what you saw going on. I'm bound to get better at this. It's the big one. Good there? All right, next. This one could potentially cause a lot of issues. Okay. If you're sitting, well, no one's sitting directly in front of me. You two might want to scoot this way just a little bit. Okay, I've got three cups, a little more than halfway filled with water, and I'm going to put an egg right over each of them. And hopefully, I get these put in the right spots. Oh dear. Can you even test this? Oh dear. This piece of cardboard is not real happy with these eggs. Can you even test this? Put it on the ground. Should we answer that? That's a little better. Okay, here we go. Alright, make sure I'm roughly in the right spots here. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now, I'm going to use a broom, and I'm going to hit this piece of cardboard with a pretty decent amount of force. Now, what can we assume the eggs are going to do? Okay, there's really only two options, right? They either fall and break, they go to glass. It's one of the other. Right, so they're either going to fly off with the cardboard and break, or they're going to fall and fall into the water. Why might they stay and fall into the water? Because of inertia. Because of inertia. In this, in this case, gravity's pulling it down, but the inertia is doing what to the eggs? Keeping them still. Keeping them still because objects at rest. Like they rest. So let's see if we're right. Oh, we're gonna do we're gonna do a test hit off to the side here. Make sure I've got this lined up right. All right, that should work. All right, ready? Here we go. Yay! 
Opportunity here. Why it's do they appear bigger in the cup than on side? Yeah, this is this is called light refraction. It's the the water itself and the shape of the cup are bending the light, and when it bends that light, it magnifies the egg. So there, it's is that how not really. Magnifying glass works? Yeah, it's yes. basically that's how magnifying glass works. Okay, same thing with this one. Would you draw a picture of what you see? This one was the eggs and cup. We had the three cups. Okay, we had the piece of cardboard over that. And then I might show some dotted lines. They fell into the water. But then I want you to describe why. Down here, write a sentence. Why did the eggs fall when I hit the cardboard? The inertia of them kept them still. Exactly, because objects at rest like to stay at rest. Um, eggs, you can make float if you boil. boil. When you boil an egg, it changes the density. Like, like oh, <laughs> you like levitating in the yeah, air. Yeah, they stay at rest. Like, they stay right there. That's now, okay, uh, let's, let's put that in context with like a cartoon. Something you guys have all seen, I'm sure. Why the Coyote and the Roadrunner, right? Oh, okay. Of course. Um, Eventually, when the, road, uh, ro uh, when the Coyote's chasing the Roadrunner, he ends up running off a cliff at some point, right? And, and when he goes off the cliff, what happens to him? He stays there. He, stays he kind of stays there for a second. And, like he that, and then he falls, right? Sometimes he runs back. Now, sometimes he tries, right? But this, it doesn't work usually. But believe it or not, the cartoon is not entirely wrong. The what, what you're dealing with there is the fact that because he was at rest in relation to the fall, you know, he wasn't actually falling, so his, his body was kind of at rest at that point. It does take a little bit of time for gravity to take over. Now, the cartoon exaggerates it. The cartoon makes it take several seconds for him to fall. But in real life, it, it actually takes a moment or two for gravity to take over for you to begin falling. If you've ever been on a trampoline, you've experienced this. When you jump on a trampoline, when you're at the top of the jump, don't you feel yourself almost weightless for like that long? Yes. Yeah. yeah, you feel yourself almost weightless for a split second. Same thing with a roller coaster. When you're on a roller coaster, right as you hit that top part and just before you come back down again, you feel that moment where your inertia has you sitting still because objects at rest want to stay at rest, but then gravity takes over. So the cartoon basically has it right, but it's exaggerating it. Okay? Um, all right, next one. I need a victim. Right here. Sam, I'm first. I like the mountains. Let me steal this stool. Okay, as you come over here, I want you to grab three textbooks. Okay. All right, sit on the stool, please. You've signed the waiver, right? All right, now okay. we will not condone any injuries you overcome. I'm going to take this nail and this hammer. I'm going to put this board on his head. Oh, God. Oh, no. David Blackburn. And I'm going to nail this into his head with the hammer. <laughs> not really, not really. Well, actually, really, but we're going to start with the books on his head first. And then I'm going to put the board on his head. Okay. And then I'm going to hammer it. Now, well, as I'm hammering, I'm not going to drive the nail all the way through the board. I'm just going to get the nail into the wood, which requires a little bit of force, right? Okay. And I don't want you to just think about how the force feels and try to remember how that force feels because we're going to compare what we're about to do to something else, a different amount of force here in a second. Okay? So we're going to start hammering it. Ready? Don't die. Start it. Okay, I'm going to give it a couple of really decent whacks. Okay. Did you feel any pain at all? Not really? Did you feel 
movement that you feel the force in general. Okay, let's try it again. Why don't you take one taste of a gum? Uh oh, no. No, Elijah. Okay. We're going to do it again. Okay, ready? Get started. Okay, give it a decent whack or two. Oh, missed. Missed again. I'm still good with the hand. There we go. Okay, so comparatively speaking, how did that force feel compared to the second one? It's a lot harder. It's a little harder, right? Okay, let's do it with one textbook. Bend my neck. So in general, as we were removing the textbooks, what was he saying the amount of force felt like? It was getting harder. Was I really hitting Was I really hitting the nail harder? No. No. So what was changing? The amount of force. Yes! Okay. Hey. Oh, y'all heard that. Listen. Okay, so what was actually changing? Because my force didn't change much. Granted, it's really hard to get the exact same amount of force every time, unless you're using some sort of machine. But what was changing most was the amount of mass between the nail and his head. The amount of mass between the nail and his head. The amount of mass being different is changing the inertia of everything that as I'm hitting it. So I'm actually trying to when I'm when I'm passing the force through the board and the textbooks. I'm trying to pass the force through, the force of putting that, that nail into the wood through all of this mass. And all of this mass has more inertia than this much mass. Okay, and this has more inertia than this much mass. So basically what we're saying is, is when you have all of these textbooks together, you've got a lot of mass, you've got a lot of inertia, it is difficult to make this much mass move, right? And because it's difficult to make this much mass move, he does not feel as much force into his head because the inertia is so high, it's harder to make larger objects move. And as we made the object smaller, he felt more force because it's easier to make smaller objects move. Just kind of making sense? Okay, let's do that one. Let's draw a picture. Let's call it nail on head. Okay, so here's the stool, and here's our guy. Okay. Elijah has some long legs. <laughs> With three textbooks. And the board. And the nail. And then, uh, hammer. Best hammer. It almost looks more like an axe, but that's okay. Okay. Now, under this picture, describe. Took a textbook away each time, made it feel like it had more force, and then describe why it was giving more force. 